These are the worked out solutions for the practice test for test two of quarter two for math six. And so let's take a look at our first problem. It says that Sarah's bedroom is four fifths, 14 and 5 sixths feet long and 12 and 1 quarter feet wide. And they're asking us to estimate. So keyword there, estimate. So when we estimate, we're not coming up with an exact answer. So we're just approximating what these numbers are. And it says we want to estimate the difference. Well, difference is a key word that tells us that we're going to end up subtracting those two numbers. So we want to find the difference between the length and the width. So here's the length, and here's the width. So what we need to do is take those two numbers, 14 and 5, 6, and then we're going to subtract the 12 and 1 quarter. Now we're approximating these numbers. So the way we approximate is we round to the nearest half. And so if the number is really close, the fraction's really close to 1, we're going to round this up. In this case, it is. See, 5 is very close to 6, so that means we're going to round this up to 15. When the number's really small like this, very small compared to the other number, that means we're going to end up rounding it down just to, we're going to treat that 1 quarter as 0, and so we're going to round this down to just 12. Now, if this were in the middle, maybe like if this were 2 6 or 3 6 or even 4 6, we'd end up rounding this to a half. But in this case, we're rounding to the next number. In this case, we're rounding down. And so we go ahead and do that subtraction, and we end up with 3. Now, give me some units there as well. So 3 feet is the answer. Well, looking at our next one, it says find the sum. Okay, so now we're not approximating. We're actually coming up with the exact answer. We're going to write our answer in simplest form. So what we need to do is come up with a common denominator. So on the 3 fourths, I'm going to multiply that by 5 fifths, and I'm going to multiply this one by 4 fourths. Now, the reason I did that is I looked at the factors, and there's factors of 2 and 2 make 4, where 5 only has 5 and 1. So that means I need to multiply the Four by a five because that was the factor it was missing. Where a five was missing two twos, which multiplies to make four. So that's why I multiplied it by four over four. So we multiply straight across. I've got now fifteen twentieths. So five and three make fifteen. Five and four make twenty. Plus and then two times four makes eight. Where five times four makes twenty. See now we can compare the two numbers because we have the same denominator. In this case, we're adding, and so we end up with 23 twentieths. And now all we want to do is change it to a mixed number. So we divide 20 into 23. Well, it's going to go one time, 20 left over. So we've got, or when we multiply, we get 20. And when we subtract, we end up with 3 left over. So 1 and 3 twentieths is our answer. So I'll box that, and we'll move on to the next one. Here we're trying to find a difference. Difference means subtract. And so we want to write our answer in the simplest form. So let's go ahead and break these numbers down. 2 and 3 make 6, where 3 and 3 make 9. So now let's look to see what each, each denominator needs, what factor it's missing. Well, if I look at the 6, the 6 only has a 2 and a 3, where 9 has two threes. So that means the 6 is missing that extra 3, which would make 9. And the 9 is missing the 2, so we'll multiply it by 2 over 2. So when I multiply, I get 15 eighteenths, and I'm taking away 2 eighteenths. And so when I do that subtraction, that leaves me a 13 eighteenths. And there is our answer. Well, the next problem says a female gray whale is 45 and a quarter feet. The male is only 43 and a half. Interesting that the male is a little smaller than the female. Typically, it doesn't work that way, but in this case, it does. And so it says, how much longer is the female than the, and then the male? So how much longer? So that means that we're going to end up subtracting these two numbers. And so when I subtract, I'm going to end up, since they're mixed numbers, I'm going to write them in this column format, 45 and a quarter, and then I'm going to take away the 43 and 1 half. And so I'm going to come up with a common denominator. So I'll go ahead and multiply the 2 or the 1 over 2 by 2 over 2. See, that will make 2 fourths. And then I have the same denominator as this one. I'll just rewrite it over here, 1 quarter. But we've got a problem. Our problem is that when we subtract, we're going to end up with a negative fraction. We can't have that. So what we need to end up doing 
is borrowing. So here's how it works. So we're going to borrow from 1 from the 45. We're going to change that to 44. Well, if I borrow 1, it means I need to add 1 to this fraction. Well, in order to add to that fraction, I need to write it with a common denominator. So I'm going to use the denominator, 4 fourths. And then that makes 5 fourths altogether. And so now, I'll bring over this 2 fourths so you can see where that's coming from. And I can go ahead and do the subtraction. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 5 fourths take away 2 fourths gives us 3 fourths. And then 44 minus 43 gives me 1. So 1 and 3 fourths feet. Give me the units when they're dealing with the word problem. And taking a look at our next one, it says... Uh, manatee weighs one and a half tons. Okay, that's the important information. A walrus weighs uh, one and three fourths tons. What is the combined weight of the two animals? Okay, combined means that we're going to end up adding these two. And so we'll take the one half plus the one and three fourths. So I'll write the one and three fourths right here. And we're adding these numbers together. So I need to come up with a common denominator once more. So same sort of thing as the last one. I need to multiply this by 2 over 2. So that gives me 2 fourths. And over here, I have 3 fourths. Well, when I add these two numbers together, I end up with 5 fourths. And here, 0 plus the 1 gives me 1. So I have 1 and 5 fourths. Well, 5 fourths is an improper fraction. So what we end up needing to do is change this to a mixed number. So I divide 4 into 5. It goes one time with 4 left over there. So 1 left over after I do the subtraction. So 1 and 1 fourth. So this number right here is the same thing as I had this initial 1, that's where that came from, plus 1 and 1 fourth. So that would make a total of 2 and 1 fourth. Tons is the weight of these two combined animals. Well, here we're just multiplying a mixed number by a fraction. So the way we do that is we have to change this to an improper fraction. So the way we do it is we go 2 times 7 plus the 4. So always the whole number times the denominator plus the numerator. And it's always over the denominator. And I multiply by 1 -sixth as well. So I go ahead and do that work. I end up here with 14 when I multiply. Plus the 4 gives me 18 sevenths. Uh, times, so I'm multiplying here, let's fix that sign, times by 1 sixth. And so I can do a little cross canceling. Let's do that. Makes the problem easier at the end. So I see that 6 goes into 18 three times. See, I divided this by 6, and I divided the 6 by 6. I divide by the same number. And so now what I have is 3 sevenths times by 1 over 1. Well, that just makes 3 sevenths. And that would be my answer in the simplest form. Well, we've got three more problems. Let's take a look at those. And here are the last three. And so the first one says that we are to divide. And we're going to write in simplest form. So let's take that 2 thirds. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So that's the key with division of fractions is to multiply by the reciprocal. We look for some cross-canceling, and I do see a little bit. You see, we can divide both the top and the bottom here by 2. And so when I do that, this becomes a 1 and this becomes a 4. Well, I've got more I can do. So I can divide the 3 by 3 and the 9 by 3. So when I do that, 9 divided by 3 makes 3. 3 divided by 3 makes 1. So now I've got these. I've got 1 over 1 times by 3 over 4. Well, when I go ahead and multiply, I get 3 fourths as the answer. Let's take a look at our next one. It says a recipe calls for 2 thirds tablespoons of thyme per loaf. How many tablespoons are needed for 9 and 1 third loaves? So in this one, 1 tablespoon, uh, is, or 2 thirds tablespoon, is for 1 loaf. So then I'd have to, to find out 2 loaves, I'd have to have another two-thirds tablespoons, and another two-thirds tablespoons. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to have to repeat addition. Well, repeating addition is multiplication. And so that's what we're going to end up doing. So we're going to multiply. And so another key word there is two-thirds tablespoons of time per loaf. And so that of typically always tells us that it's a key word when it comes after the after the fraction in this case, 
that means that it's going to we're going to end up multiplying. And so we're going to take two thirds, and I'm going to multiply by nine and one third. Well, the same thing holds true as number six did, where we have to change that mixed number to an improper fraction. So the first one's going to stay the same. We're going to multiply the nine and the three, and so that should be a multiplication sign. So times by 3, and then add the 1, and it's all over the denominator of 3. So let's go ahead and redo that problem. 2 thirds times by 27 and 1 make 28 thirds. And then we go ahead and multiply across. So when we do that, we end up with 56 ninths. Well, when I do the division, I need to find out how many loaves that is. 9 to 56, how many times? Well, 6 times makes 54. Do the subtraction, two's left over. So two or six and two ninths. So that would be the number of tablespoons we need for nine and one third loaves. Six and two ninths tablespoons. Well, let's take a look at our last problem here. It says how many two thirds foot ribbon can be cut from a roll that is eleven twelfths feet long? And so, in this case, we want to find out how many of these are going to fit into this. So we want to find out two-thirds, how many, the number of two-thirds into eleven-twelfths. Well, that's a division problem, so we're going to end up dividing. And so, the way we're going to do it is we're going to see how many of these two-thirds fit into this. So we're going to divide by two-thirds. So we have 11 twelfths divided by 2 thirds. And so when we do that, we need to multiply by the reciprocal and then look for any cross canceling that may occur. So we have 3 goes into 12 four times. So basically what I did is divided each of those numbers by 3 and multiply across. Well, let's see what's left over here. 11 fourths times by 1 over 2. So when I go ahead and multiply, I get 11 over 8. Well, not done yet. We want to see how many pieces that's going to represent. So we've got 8 into 11, and 8 goes into 11. We have one time with 3 left over. And so we can make 1 and 3 eighths, and then pieces, we'll say. And so those are the types of problems that we're going to end up uh, having on our test this next week. And good luck.